Last week, we spoke with an expert with the United Nations on the humanitarian crisis in Haiti caused by the rise in gang violence. In this second part of the series, focusing on Haiti, our Washington, D.C. correspondent Rachel Knapp shares what's being done to end the violence and the challenges being faced. Haiti is in a catastrophic situation. Bill O'Neill, an expert on the human rights situation in Haiti, estimates more than 400,000 people are displaced. The gangs have dominated almost every aspect of people's lives. The violence has contributed to a staggering rise in kidnappings, killings, and sexual violence. A culmination of issues have destabilized the country. Haiti's unpopular and unelected acting Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced he will step down, but does not welcome the international community's efforts to create a transitional council. One of Haiti's most powerful gang leaders that goes by the moniker Barbecue told reporters Haitians should decide who is going to be the head of the country and what model of government they want. The gangs are, unless they are faced with something more powerful than they are, um, they will just keep doing this horrible, horrible, horrible things that they're doing to their own people. It's a real tragedy. O'Neill says regaining control of Haiti is in the works, but it's complicated. The U.N. and other agencies are working together to find solutions to curb the violence. They are doing all kinds of things. There's a there's a police section. They're, they're not armed or, or they don't have police powers, but there are international U.N. police who are working side by side with the Haitian National Police, who are the first line of defense against the gangs. The problem is they're overwhelmed. They're outgunned. All the weapons, there's not a single gun or bullet manufactured in Haiti. Most of them come from the United States. Uh, most of them directly from the port of Miami. A big chunk of them also comes through either Jamaica or the Dominican Republic across the border. So that's a huge problem. Back in October, the United Nations Security Council approved moving forward with a multinational security support mission in Haiti. Kenya announced they will lead this MSS, but so far, no additional forces have been sent. O'Neill says complicated issues with the Kenyan government and a lack of funding have been the two biggest hurdles for sending help to Haiti. About a week ago, Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced an additional $100 million to finance the MSS force to Haiti after meeting with Caribbean leaders. O'Neill worries time is running out to move forward with this MSS to Haiti. The UN only authorized the mission for a year. Half of that authorization so far has already passed, leaving little time left for the mission to Haiti. It's very frustrating because every Haitian I talked to when I was in Haiti the last time, which was October, November, said, when are they coming? The people in the gang-controlled areas are desperate and totally support having this international force come and help them because they know the Haitian National Police, even though they're willing, even though they're able, uh, not able, they're willing, they're trying, but they don't have the capacity, the numbers, or the firepower to do it by themselves, and they need help. In Washington, D.C., Rachel Knapp, One Caribbean Television.